After 4 fixed 486 CPUs, one revived Diamond Monster 3D and many attempts to achieve an acceptable frame rate in Tomb Raider, the moment has finally come where we will unleash 3DFX's Glide and its voodoo power to render the game in 3D accelerated hardware mode on the Socket 3 platform. For today I have prepared a real treat for you. Not only will we have benchmarks for two additional CPUs, I also spent some extra time post-processing the footage of over two dozen benchmark results. Adding a framerate graph so you can see what is really going on with the framerate in this game. There will be three benchmarks for most of the 10 CPU configurations I have prepared. The first one is the built-in demo scene where Lara has to fight a handful of wolves. Second, with Lara controlled by me, we will explore how well the game runs in a larger indoor area. And finally, the third scene will be the fight against the T-Rex. So what are those two additional CPUs I was talking about? The lowest clocked CPU in the pack of 4 we have fixed in the past videos is an Intel DX266. Out of curiosity, I thought it would be interesting to add a CPU clocked at an even lower frequency. This Intel DX33 is clocked at half the frequency of the DX2 and will be the slowest contender today. We shall see if this CPU is capable of running Tomb Raider with the help of the Diamond Monster 3D. And then there is a Cyrex DX4100, which fits perfectly between the Intel CPUs clocked at 66MHz and the AMD 5x86 clocked at 133MHz. It is a true 486 and does not have any enhancements the other Cyrex CPU has. Unfortunately, the CPU is dead. Once again, a bad purchase on eBay. It is unbelievably annoying when you get non-working hardware that was not marked as defective. I have stopped purchasing from private sellers on eBay because I cannot test the hardware immediately when it is shipped to Germany. I did notice that defective hardware being sold as used or untested have increased over the past years. So be careful when you purchase retro gear on classifieds websites, especially when it comes to early 3DFX add-on cards. Descriptions like boots to BIOS or works on Windows desktop says nothing about the proper working of the card. If you want to avoid disappointment when purchasing retro hardware, then you should check out electromine.de. Electromine is specialized in the global trade of second-hand computer hardware as well as electronic components. When you shop at Electromine, you not only get a 30-day right to cancel your order, you are also protected by a 12-month warranty for used hardware and 24 months for new items. Never worry about poorly packaged shipments ever again. Electromine ships memory, CPUs and other small electronic components well packaged and in anti-static bags, so you can enjoy your new retro hardware from the day it arrives. And to make your first purchase an even better experience, Electromine is offering a 12% discount to all my viewers when you use the code BITS ON BOLTS during checkout. Links to Electromine.de and their eBay store are in the video description. And now, let's jump right into the benchmarks of the first CPU, the newly added Intel 486DX33. And when we start the game, we are greeted with a 3DFX animation nobody wants to experience. Will this be a harbinger of what is to follow? The menu screen gives a bit of hope since we are hitting 30 frames per second, the frame cap of Tomb Raider. However, once the build-in demo starts, our excitement is immediately put to rest as the game consistently maintains a frame rate in the single digits throughout the entire benchmark. This is the only CPU where I did not bother to go through the other two benchmarks. Unfortunately, a 33MHz CPU is not enough to achieve a frame rate that leads to an enjoyable experience in Tomb Raider, even with the help from a Diamond Monster 3D. Keep in mind that the resolution for 3DFX Glide is fixed at 640x480, which is almost 5 times as many pixels compared to the 320x200 pixel resolution of the software renderer. Let's move on to the Intel DX266 with write through cache. Although the 3DFX animation is better, it is still far from what we would like to see. The benchmark starts strong, but quickly settles at a frame rate between 12 and 15 frames per second. And there are a few occasions when we drop to single digit frame rates. But the game may be considered playable by diehard gamers who do not have access to faster CPUs. Let's have a look at a larger area now. We start in a relatively narrow passage where the game hits the frame cap of 30 frames per second. But as soon as we arrive at the platform overlooking a larger area, the frame rate immediately drops to single digits once more. 
Now I think it is a bit far-fetched to call this playable. Each time there is some action, the game suffers from slow frame rates, which does hurt your entertainment value. There are two other spots I will check for each CPU. The first one is when Lara walks across the bridge. Here we can observe a frame rate of 13 frames per second. Once she reaches the other side, we will turn to the right and overlook the map from this platform. And here we can measure a frame rate of 12 frames per second. And now we get to the final test for this CPU, the fight against the T-Rex. We start in the single digits, and it doesn't improve much further throughout the fight. There are probably too many objects to be calculated in this environment, from the plants and trees to the extra polygons the T-Rex brings to the scene. We barely touch double digit frame rates. Only when the T-Rex has been defeated and we look towards the rocky stone walls, we are rewarded with up to 20 frames per second. Maybe I was really too fast to call this playable for die-hard gamers. Let's see if the same CPU with right back cache brings any improvement. The benchmark looks very similar to what we have seen before with the CPU's level 1 cache in write through mode. We probably have to wait for the final comparison, where I calculate the average frame rate of the demo benchmark for all CPUs. Maybe there is a slight difference between the two models, but so far, both Intel DX266 CPUs feel identical. The larger area with the two wolves also seem to be unchanged compared to the previous CPU. Initially, we are hitting the frame cap, but later, we barely reach double digit frame rates. Only when the two wolves are no longer running around, the frame rate improves. Lara walks over the bridge at 13 frames per second and overlooks the map at 12 frames per second. Very similar to what we have seen before. We probably will not see any difference in the scene with the T Rex as well. We start in single digit frame rates and continue to have it this way throughout the entire fight. We only get to higher frame rates when we bring Lara's attention away from busy areas with a lot of trees and the corpse of the T-Rex. Until now, none of the CPUs deliver an acceptable frame rate, and the Diamond Monster 3D is probably underwhelmed by the work it receives from our 486 CPUs. Hopefully the first CPU which is clocked at 100MHz in this test will change that. This Texas Instruments DX4100 is another CPU we haven't seen in any of my videos before. And although the 3DFX animation is a lot better than anything we have seen so far, it is still not perfect. As I mentioned before, my Cyrix CPU is not working, but the CPU from Texas Instruments is technically identical to the Cyrix CPU. What you should know however is, that this CPU has only 8KB of level 1 cache, while an Intel DX4100 has 16KB. If you're interested in seeing more benchmarks with different flavors of 486 CPUs, like an Intel DX4100, please let me know in the comments. In this benchmark we went from 7 to 14 and now to around 20 frames per second, an almost perfect scaling of performance with CPU frequency. Let's see how the game performs in larger areas. The good news is that we rarely drop to single digit frame rates. And now Lara walks over the bridge at 17 frames per second and overlooks the map at 13 frames. Just one frame better compared to the previous CPUs. The low frame rate here is probably due to the location of the wolf corpses. But now let's move on to the final test of this CPU. The scene with the T-Rex is finally rendering in double digit frame rates.
Occasionally, we dip a bit below 10 frames per second, but only for a brief moment. I don't know about you, but I feel that each additional frame makes a huge difference in gameplay. Maybe we get better results when using the Cyrex 5x86 running at the same frequency. For this test, I left all enhancements disabled. To my knowledge, the Cyrex should then behave similarly to a regular 486 CPU. However, from the start there is a tremendous improvement in the 3DFX animation. This looks promising. While we still drop occasionally below 20 frames per second, we do stay above that mark most of the time. At one point we drop to 16 frames per second, but we also hit the frame cap of 30 a couple of times. The open area with the wolves also feels a lot better now. While we do drop below 15 frames per second during intense fighting, we never see single digit frame rates anymore. This CPU is definitely not just a 486 when its enhancements are disabled. Lara walks over the bridge with 22 frames per second. That is 5 frames more compared to the Texas Instruments chip, which is also a Cyrix core at the same frequency. And the improvements keep on coming when Lara looks over the map at 20 frames per second, 7 frames more than before. The fight with the T-Rex is also a lot smoother now. Lara fights at roughly 15 frames per second, a lot better compared to the similarly clocked 486 CPU. I must say, I'm impressed by the Cyrex 5x86 and would not have expected such a big difference. But now we should have a look at how much the CPU improves when we enable the enhancements of the chip. Wow, I think we are close to the 3DFX animation I'm used to. And from the beginning we play mainly above 25 frames per second, even hitting the frame cap multiple times. This gameplay is much better compared to the chip without the enhancements enabled. Even though this chip does better compared to a regular 486DX4, the enhancements push this chip to a different level. We never dip below 20 frames per second and remain above 25 frames per second for over 90% of the time. Lara fights the wolves at a very playable 17 to 20 frames per second, an improvement of 3 to 5 frames compared to the CPU with its enhancements disabled. I wouldn't mind to play the game at this frame rate. Lara walks over the bridge at 26 frames per second now, another 4 frames extra by just setting a few flags of the CPU. That is amazing! Looking over the map is now limited by the frame cap of 30 frames per second. Fighting the T-Rex is anywhere between 16 and 22 frames per second. We still observe the occasional dip, but throughout the test the frame rate is a lot better compared to the previous CPUs. I am very impressed with this CPU from Cyrix but sad that many may have missed out on the extra performance that was probably dormant on many systems. But the question now is, how does this CPU perform when overclocked to 120 MHz? Unfortunately, this is easier said than done. Overclocking the Cyrex 5x86 was very difficult. Only one of my four samples was capable of running at that frequency and it only did after I increased the voltage to 3.6 volts. I don't know if I just got unlucky in the silicon lottery, but here are a few issues I encountered trying to reach 120 MHz. One issue was that the boot process got stuck the moment I accessed a drive to boot the operating system. Loosening the memory and cache timings in the BIOS allowed me to progress further, but we still ended up with file read errors. 
Hardware Info failed with a garbled screen, and there were many more random crashes, freezes and unexpected behaviors. In the end, I found out that one of my CPUs is capable of running stable at 120MHz and 3.6V, with all enhancements enabled. Unfortunately, I had to manually adjust the memory and cache timings in the BIOS. Be aware that all other CPUs are tested with a configuration set to auto, which probably isn't the best. This Cyrix CPU has the most optimized timings, which most likely will give it an additional boost. But enough with this for now, let's see the benchmarks of this CPU. The 3DFX animation is for sure the best I have seen so far. The 20MHz boost is working. And the demo benchmark is now glued to 30 frames per second for most of the time. We do drop to 25 frames on one occasion, but other slowdowns stop at 27 frames per second. This feels very similar to the Pentium 120 I tested with this game, but there is a big caveat comparing the benchmarks today to the Pentium results, which I will explain at the end of this video. Lara finally fights the wolves at 30 frames per second for most of the time. This is smooth gameplay and the Voodoo card helps this CPU to achieve great and playable performance at a resolution of 640 by 480. No ifs, ands or buts, Lara crosses the bridge at 30 frames per second. Surprisingly, we do have a lower frame rate while she's looking over the map. But that may be due to the wolf corpses being at an unfortunate location and have to be rendered. I wouldn't read too much into it. This CPU and the performance it delivers is astonishing, and it continues to impress during the fight with the T-Rex. We rarely drop below 20 frames per second, which is the best result we have seen so far. I wonder if the AMD CPU is capable of beating the strong performance of the Cyrix CPU. Although the AMD CPU clocked at 133MHz has a higher frequency, the 3DFX logo doesn't feel as smooth as it did when using the Cyrix 5x86 at a frequency of 120MHz. Occasionally, we dip below 20 frames per second. Still a playable result, but less impressive since we have seen what the Cyrix 5x86 can achieve. In the larger area, frame rates stay mainly at around 17 frames per second during combat, but improve when walking around. Lara crosses the bridge at 26 frames per second and overlooks the map at 28 frames per second. The T-Rex battle is rendered at 16 to 17 frames per second. This seems to be very similar to the Cyrex 5x86 clocked at 100 MHz. I have a feeling that the FPU may be the culprit in the vast different performance results we get, including the 3DFX logo animation. Let's move on and overclock the AMD CPU to 150MHz, with a frontside bus of 50 and a multiplier of 3. This will be the fastest bus speed we will see today. The 3DFX animation seems to like the faster CPU, at least I feel that it is much smoother than in the previous test. The benchmark never drops below 24 frames per second, a much better result compared to the same CPU clocked at 133MHz. This result is most comparable with the Cyrix 5x86 clocked at 100MHz and its enhancements enabled. Lara fights the wolves at a frame rate of around 17 frames per second, the same as before, but with frequent spikes to a much higher frame rate. That will raise the average result for the CPU, but it is not good enough to beat the Cyrix 5x86 at 120MHz. Lara crosses the bridge at 26 to 28 frames per second, a slight improvement, and she overlooks the map at 22 frames per second. A similar drop that we have observed with the Cyrex CPU.
and the battle with the T-Rex improved marginally at 17 to 24 frames per second. We have reached the final benchmark in today's video. I can't tell if the 3DFX animation is as smooth as with the Cyrex CPU, but it is not bad. Like before, the benchmark never dips below 24 frames per second, which is one frame lower compared to the Cyrex CPU clocked at 120MHz with all enhancements enabled. This could cost the AMD CPU, which is clocked 40MHz higher, the top spot. This test seems to be very similar to when the CPU was clocked at 150MHz. I am really curious if the AMD CPU performs better when clocked at 150 or 160MHz. The open area renders a lot better now compared to the 150MHz overclock, which is a bit surprising. We never did below 20 frames per second, 3 frames better than before. And similar to the Cyrex CPU at 120MHz, Lara crosses the bridge at 30 frames per second. And she overlooks the map at 24 frames per second. And finally, the T-Rex. Here we stay between 20 and 25 frames per second during the fight, a noticeable improvement compared to the same CPU clocked 10 MHz slower. This is very similar to the Cyrex 5x86 clocked at 120 MHz. And I promise, this was the last benchmark for today. It was a lot of information, so let's aggregate the results of the built-in demo benchmark. I will reuse an application I have written for another Tomb Raider video, which can extract the frame rate counter from video footage by utilizing optical character recognition. From the output we can plot graphs to get an idea of the overall performance of each CPU. We start with the Intel DX33. Most of the time we remain in single digit frame rates. Only at the end when Lara walks into the empty room, before the bear attacks, do we reach 16 frames per second. The DX266 doubles the performance even though we sometimes see an inverse behavior of the graph. This is because Tomb Raider reports frame rates every second only and therefore there may be measuring inconsistencies. However, when averaging the results to which we will come in a moment, they do deliver a valid representation of each benchmark. The caching strategy doesn't seem to matter much, but we will be able to tell once we look at the average frame rates. The Cyrex DX4100 is another step up and delivers better frame rates overall. The 5x86 from Cyrex outperforms the DX4 even though it is clocked at the same frequency. And when we switch on all the enhancements, the CPU gets another significant boost, hitting the frame rate limit multiple times. When the Cyrex 5x86 is overclocked to 120MHz, we see 30 frames per second over 50% of the time. The AMD CPU clocked at 133MHz is not capable of outperforming the Cyrex CPU and is closer to the 5x86 clocked at 100MHz with its enhancements enabled. Now it's quite crowded at the top of the chart, so let's get rid of a few results. When we overclock the AMD CPU to 150MHz, the performance increases, but not by much. It is for sure less than I expected with a system bus frequency of 50. Maybe the BIOS has changed memory and cache timings automatically at this frequency, but this investigation is not in the scope of today's video. At 160MHz the AMD CPU is outperforming most of the other CPUs. Except for the Cyrex 5x86 clocked at 120MHz having all its enhancements enabled. Here is a graph with all results on one page. I don't blame you if you cannot read the information in this graph properly, so let's quickly go over the average frame rates of all CPUs in a bar chart. There is not much to tell for the bottom 4 CPUs. Just 486 CPUs scaling based on their frequency. The only information we get here is that the DX266 with write back cache is slightly faster than the model with write through cache. The Cyrex 5x86 renders the game over 3 frames per second faster compared to the Texas Instruments CPU clocked at the same frequency. Enabling the special features of the CPU pushes the frame rate up by an additional 3.5 frames. In total, the 5x86 outperforms its 486 counterparts by 7 frames per second at the same frequency. And when we overclock the Cyrex 5x86 to 120MHz, it beats any other CPU in this chart, even the AMD CPU clocked at 160MHz. Oh, and in my tests, the AMD CPU clocked at 150MHz is slower than at 160MHz. And those are all the numbers I have gathered. There are still a few words regarding the Pentium benchmarks I have collected in another video. 
I mentioned that we cannot compare the results of today's video with the results from the Pentium 120. And the reason for this is anti-aliasing. All Pentium results were gathered with anti-aliasing enabled. However, if we enable this feature on the system we have tested today, the performance drops drastically, even when using one of the fastest CPUs. Here is one example. Without anti-aliasing, the game renders at 21 frames per second. When we switch it on, the frame rate drops to single digits, and nobody wants to see benchmarks like this. So one question remains. Why do some CPUs, like the Cyrix 5x86, perform so much better? I have a suspicion that the floating point unit is responsible for the extra performance. Which brings me to another CPU that might hold the answer to this question. This is an AMD SX66, a CPU without a floating point unit. I wonder how Tomb Raider runs on this CPU. I also mentioned the Intel 486DX100, which hasn't appeared in any of the benchmarks. The question this CPU could answer is if 16KB of level 1 cache can help with the performance in Tomb Raider over the 8KB the Texas Instruments CPU has. If you want to know the answers to all those questions, please let me know in the comments. Also, let me know what you think about the results you have seen today. Would you have expected the Cyrex 5x86 to do so exceptionally well, even though it is much lower clocked compared to the AMD CPU? And now, we have finally come to the end of this long video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to help this channel grow. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.